But the code in 1993 to do any sort of dynamic web work would look like this. This is a CGI bin written in C. This is not nice to work with. Most of the world switched to CGI PM, the Perl module for writing CGI scripts. I didn't like it. Lots of people loved it. But this was still programming HTML in Perl. I wanted to separate the layout, the look and feel from the actual behind the scenes business logic. So I wanted my stuff to look more like this. I wanted it to look like HTML with a few special tags. I didn't actually have the closing question mark here. I put it in the slide because all my syntax highlighting wouldn't work. But <laughs> back then, I didn't have the closing question mark because I hadn't fully read the spec. There was an X, X, T, X HTML spec that I did not read very well. Um, so I only had the opening question mark in the beginning. But still, I wanted it to look like this. I wanted special tags in my HTML. And the whole idea of PHP in the very early days was that it was an API. For end users, I would present sort of the dynamic web applications like a, uh, a bookmark type place or a comment section, anything like that. But for the developers, the picture I tried to paint to them was this was a C API for the web so that you didn't have to know anything web specific. You just had to write your business logic. And it was a stack based API. So you would pop off the argument to the tag. So if you're adding a special tag to this templating system, you could pass in an argument, you pop it off the stack, you do something with it, and then you push the result back onto the stack. And now in this case, I was doing a cosine tag. So now you would have a cosine function available to you in the templating system. And this was the whole concept of PHP. It didn't work at all. Nobody wanted to write even simple C code. Everybody just wanted to use the templating system. And they wanted to do crazy things in the templating system. The templating system to begin with was very, very simple. There weren't even any loops. There were no functions. There was nothing there. It was just a very simple replace this tag with the result of the C code. And I figured all the looping and everything would be done in C because it's compiled, fast language. Why would you want to write your business logic in this very slow, clunky templating system? But the web was moving so fast, and there weren't enough C developers around that were taking the web seriously. To most hardcore C developers, the web was a toy. It would go away. It was a fad. They're not going to waste their time on it. So building the web fell to people who weren't hardcore programmers, and the, the non-programmers did not want to look at a C pointer. Pointers are scary and confusing. We don't want to do, have anything to do with that. C memory management is terrible, which I guess it is terrible, but I mean, it's not that hard, I thought. But it was too hard for people to do. So I kind of changed tax once I realized that no one was going to follow my idea of building the web in C. So I started looking more at the ecosystem itself. And I spent quite a bit of time looking at how all the pieces fit together. How Linux, Apache, and initially it was a database called MiniSQL, and, and PHP fit together. And for example, I added the limit clause to MiniSQL, which has now propagated into many other databases but I probably spent just as much time fiddling with Apache and fiddling with the Apache API, writing mod PHP to slip PHP into Apache and fixing mini SQL so mini SQL would work well as a web database than I did it on PHP itself. Now, I'm not a language guy. I don't even like programming. 
but I love solving problems. And what I, want, what I wanted was an ecosystem and a tool chain that made it easier for me to solve these problems. So I didn't have to program as much to get to my goal, which was to solve the actual problems that I was working on. So I've spent 25 years programming to avoid programming, which was not very smart. <laughs> 